That's not good. Hey, so today I wanna to talk about how I make my notes for med school using Notion. In med school, you're expected to learn a ridiculous amount of information about the human body and what can go wrong with it. And with this, it's super important that you're able to organize all this information with your own thoughts in a simple and systematic way. If you guys are new to the channel, my name's Alfie and I'm a fifth year med student studying in London. And with that out the way, let's jump into the video. Ooh, okay. So to start everything all off, I wanna talk about what I use to make my notes, which is Notion. And if you haven't already heard of what Notion is, where have you been? But anyways, for those who don't know, Notion is basically Google Docs, uh, Excel, and your to-do list all combined into like one kind of baby, which is supercharged. And it's super great for organizing your notes along with many other things. I've been using Notion since my fourth year, so pre-COVID. So I feel like I have a decent amount of experience with it. Just a heads up, this video isn't sponsored by Notion, and so these are just my honest thoughts about using it to help me take notes. But Notion, if you would like to work with me, you already know where to reach me. Okay, all right guys, so let's start this video off. To kick everything off, I kinda wanna take you guys through my system of organizing and taking notes on Notion. And then I wanna go over how I might deal with lectures, question banks, and guidelines, because those are the main things which contribute to my notes. So when I start off the year, I like to organize everything into one massive page based on the module that I'm doing. Uh, in order for me to fill this in, I like to check my university's curriculum map. And they've organized this really nice curriculum map where they have all the different modules and within each module, they have the respective conditions and diseases for that module. They like to break it down with learning outcomes, core conditions and core presentations. And the core conditions is the part which I use to kind of structure uh, my system. So for example, right now I'm on my pediatric rotation and I want to read up as much as I can about kids before I go into the hospital and start dealing with kids. Now damn, there are a lot of conditions. I didn't know there'd be so many things that can go wrong with kids. Funnily enough, as I started making this video about Notion, Notion decided to go down. Which is great but we'll just crack along. As you can see, there's a list of conditions here on the curriculum app for pediatric. I've taken those lists of conditions and moved them into my Notion page and I've organized them under different headings in this sort of like database. The only thing about this is I might group some conditions together. So for example, there are a lot of different infections that children can get. So I just grouped that to one thing called childhood infections. As you can see, there are loads of infections to know and I don't even feel like I'm done yet. But anyways, let's just click into one of these. As you can see, at the top, I like to have a contents part, which kind of just breaks down what this whole section is about. And I like to organize any teachings I might have, whether that's from lectures or tutorials at the very top. That means that as I revise my content, if I want to check any information quickly, if I want to review anything, I can go to the top and I have all the teachings up there. And then down below, I have all the different conditions. I like to break each condition into four main headings, which you're going to see throughout med school, which are definition, clinical features, investigations, and management. And so definition is talking about what the condition is. The clinical features or clinical presentation is what you're gonna see when the patient comes in. Investigations are what tests you wanna do to prove that that's actually the condition you think it is. And management is pretty self-explanatory. It's what you're gonna do to help treat and care for the patient. Now in the definition part, I like to include things which are interesting, but maybe not as important or relevant as the other things. So I like to include things like the epidemiology, the genetics, the causes and risk factors for this condition. So for example, certain conditions might be more common in boys than girls. Certain conditions might run in your family. And it's good to have this information there to kind of just add some context to it. And that's because sometimes how questions are asked is they give you these clues for you to kind of infer and figure out, okay, this is this condition because of these kind of things in the background. And this kind of feels like playing detective, which is how it kind of feels sometimes on the wards when you're kind of going through things and you're trying to figure out all the clues so you can come to the diagnosis. An important bit I like to try and include here as well is the pathophysiology, which basically means how this condition comes to be or how this condition happens. And let's sidetrack a little bit and go into ophthalmology, which is looking at the eye. And let's go into glaucoma, which is a condition in the eye. And I have a whole bit here explaining how it all happens. Now, when it comes to medicine as a whole, and I think this is the same for many other subjects, there's usually so much information that you have to try and retain. What I noticed really helps over the years is trying to really understand what's going on. If you really understand the mechanism for how something develops, then you're able to work out what would actually make sense in terms of treating the patient. Because if I knew what went wrong, 
the treatment usually is something to reverse the thing that went wrong. You don't want to just be a bin crammed full of facts. You want to be able to actually think about these facts and do something with them. Now within each section, I have a color coding system because I'm still the child. What my system is, is if there's anything important, I'm going to highlight it in yellow. Anything to do with statistics, epidemiology, genetics, I'll highlight that in green. If there's anything to do with the condition itself, I'll highlight that in red. If there's anything to do with investigation and tests, I'll highlight that in purple. And then if there's anything which is about the management or treatment or names of drugs, I'll put that in blue. Now, this color system isn't essential for you to take your notes. It's just something I like to do because it helps me sign posts and helps me skim through the information faster. So for example, if I know, okay, I'm stuck on a question and I want to check the management for glaucoma, I can just click glaucoma and I can scroll to the bottom where management is obviously. And I know immediately that the drugs are in blue. And so it just brings my eye towards that. Okay, so now that I've kind of gone over the general system for how I like to organize my notes, let's talk about what I do when it comes to sitting for lectures. Since the pandemic, I think we've all been having a lot of online lectures. And so it's really important that you're able to extract good information from lectures. And that means it's important to not just write down every single thing your lecturer says and to actually think about what the person is saying. So to overcome this, I actually wanna show you guys this app which I found from another medical student called Elizabeth Phillips. I hope I said that right. She's another medical student from King's and she makes some really lovely videos, so go check it out as well. And the app that she recommended is called Tech Sniper. So it costs five pounds, so it's not free. It helps to convert screenshots of text on your screen into editable text. So for example, if you're listening to a lecture on Zoom or Teams and they haven't sent you the slides so you can edit and things like that, then this is perfect because what it does is it helps you convert this text from their Zoom or Microsoft Teams screen into your Notion system, your Word document, whatever you want. So this is great when lecturers are going really fast and you're trying to just type everything down. I will say that the formatting isn't perfect, but it's definitely still much better because you can kind of readjust the format after. And so for me, I like to have all these notes at the top of my conditions under teachings. And then if there's anything which is really useful, then I'll drop it down into the specific bit about the condition below. And that way I have everything all in one place. All right, so the next place that I like to add information into my notes is from question banks. And the question banks that I mainly use are past medicine, QuizMed, BMJ on examination, and last year I was using past tests. And after you do a question, there's often a ton of information there. What I like to do is to work that information into the relevant part in my notes. Uh, and also at the bottom of each page, I like to have a list of the different questions that actually came up. I know this might seem a little bit like overkill, but the reason I like to do this is because Every now and again, I like to refresh my memory by seeing the way that they like to ask the questions for that condition. It might give me clues to things that might come up in the background. It might give me clues to any sort of classical findings they have for that condition. And also a really quick tip for anyone who's doing any sort of science related or maybe math related subject at uni is using arrow shortcuts. Whenever you have a condition, uh, things usually change in the body. So for example, in hypertension, uh, instead of just saying increase in blood pressure, you, I like to just use arrows. So I had a shortcut on my computer uh, for arrows as UA is for up arrow, DA is for down arrow. I'm sure there's a better shortcut for this somewhere. And so the last place that I like to go to supplement my notes is with guidelines and videos. But I think the more important one is guidelines. For videos, I might just go on YouTube if I get stuck in a condition and I might find videos from places like Osmosis, you know, amongst other things. And I might include that underneath the notes just to kind of refresh my memory whenever I do get stuck as well. When it comes to guidelines, guidelines are super important for your training and your education because based on whatever you're learning and gonna work, there are specific guidelines for what you can do and what you should do when a given patient comes in. For example, in hypertension here, uh, there's a treatment algorithm for what you should do when a patient comes in. It can look really overwhelming at first, but these are great for questions whenever you get stuck. So for example, you might find a 56 year old man who comes in, doesn't have any diabetes, and you'll go, ah, okay, I can trace my way from here, and then I will figure out that I should give him CCBs, which stand for calcium channel blockers. Now you know what to give him if a question asks for that. There's loads of different other guidelines. Like for example, right now for my pediatrics, I need to know the basic life support algorithm for whenever kids go into cardiac arrest. And there's also a really good one for heart failure. And you just follow that depending on what the patient comes in with. All right guys, so that was a whistle stop tour of how I take my notes at med school using Notion. I hope you guys found that useful. If you guys wanna see more in-depth videos about how I organize everything else in Notion, because 
I pretty much organized my whole life there. Then let me know in the comments down below. And if there's anything else you guys want to see, then leave it down below as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.